New video is up on JG9 News, an all-new channel where we talk about everything happening in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format. This video is about the report by Adam Schefter that Ron Rivera might not be fired after the game against the Cowboys because it's his birthday. Go check that out and subscribe if you have not already. And now, on with our feature presentation. January 6, 2024. It's the final week of the NFL season, and we've got an AFC South battle on our hands up at Lucas Oil Stadium between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. The stakes for this one are incredibly simple. The winner of this game clinches a playoff spot, and possibly the division, depending on what happens on Sunday in the game between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. The loser is out. One of these teams will get to extend their incredible season by at least another week, and will break a multi-season drought of missing the playoffs. The other team will have their season come to an end in heartbreaking fashion. To say that everything was on the line, and to say that this was the biggest game of the season for both of these teams, would be putting it lightly. Which means it's imperative that you play great football and don't make any crazy mistakes that could prematurely end your season. Which, uh, yeah, this one's a head scratcher. That's all I can say about it. Anyways, with the Colts down by six points and two minutes left, the Colts are faced with third and two at the 16 yard line, inside the red zone, and looking for a chance to take the lead and potentially clinch a playoff spot. The bad news is that Taylor gets stuffed one yard shy of the first down, bringing up a fourth down situation. The good news, though, is that you only need one yard to get the first. And the even better news for the purposes of this is that you have all three of your timeouts. If you're this man right here, head coach Shane Steichen, you've got all of your timeouts to work with. So even if you don't get the first down here, you can get the ball back and you have some room for error. As long as you don't do something stupid here like, I don't know, let the clock run all the way down to zero and then take a timeout, thereby ensuring the fact that a failed fourth down ends your season, you should be fine and good to go. And it's not a true do-or-die situation. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. My voice is shot, so I can't go as loud and as high as I usually do here, but I think you know what's coming. Shane Steichen, why did you take the time out? Why would you possibly put yourself in a spot where this play is your season? What can you possibly be thinking here? Now if you don't get it, your season's over. You can't get the ball back. You've got no shot. Your entire season now rests on this one play. Shane Steichen, why did you call a timeout? It's in Minshew's hand, and a drop by Goodson. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly all from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where a gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this could possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. Now for this one, we're going to take a look at the mind of Indianapolis Colts head coach Shane Steichen. This is the first time that he's appeared on this show, and there's a reason for that. He's coached his butt off with the Colts. He's done some incredible things there, and the fact that the Colts were even in this position in the first place where they were playing a winning in game is a testament to how good of a job he's done. But man, of all the times to make your first real mistake, you picked the worst possible one. Because considering the importance of the situation, this might be one of the dumbest decisions of the entire season. I don't know if the Colts win this game if they had that third timeout or not. But I do know this much, they lost that game because they didn't. So with that being said, Let's take a look at why letting the play clock run all the way down and then calling a timeout is a really bad idea. And before I go any further, no, I did not hate the play call. I feel like I could do an in-defense self on the play call if I wanted to, so this has nothing to do with the call. The play would have worked if Gardner Minshew threw a better ball and Tyler Goodson had better hands. And for everyone saying that Jonathan Taylor should have been on the field and running that play, the Texans were keyed in on him so Taylor doesn't get open like Goodson does if he's out there. I don't hate the play call. With better execution, this works. The timeout, though, that was inexcusable, and it was inexcusable for quite a few reasons. The risk-reward analysis on this timeout, simply put, is brutal. There's really no other way to say it other than being brutal. Let's say you don't call the timeout, and you call the play as normal. 
even if you do take your sweet time calling it, so as not to potentially give the Texans a ton of time to get the ball back if you score. If you get the first down, great. If you pick up the yard, you're in a good spot. However, if you don't get the first down, you at least still have a chance to win the game. If you get a defensive stop, and considering the fact that the Texans probably just run the ball three times, and you were stopping them all day on the ground, as Devin Singletary had just 63 yards on 2.6 yards per carry, with a long run of 7 yards, you will get the stop. You're getting the ball back with about 40 seconds left, having to drive 65 or so yards. It's not a great situation, obviously, and no one is suggesting otherwise. However, you have a shot. You can use the middle of the field if it's deep enough. You can call about seven plays or so if you're just going to the sideline. And at the very least, you give yourself a shot. You give yourself a fighting chance. You give yourself some margin for error and some wiggle room. If you do call the timeout, however, all right, if you get the first down, fantastic. But if you don't get the first down, you're completely and utterly screwed. If you don't get the first down, it's not just that the game is over. Your season is over. Point blank, your season is over. That's the last time your offense is touching the ball again for another nine months in a competitive setting. The reward is exactly the same, but the risk in option A, which is that you don't call the timeout, is way less than the risk in the option where you do call the timeout. And I know some of you might be saying that this is a rather simplistic way of looking at things. Just because the Colts don't have a chance to run a good play on 4th and 1 if they don't call the timeout. However, that's not true at all. First off, it's 1 yard on a day where you're averaging over 6 yards per carry, and where you've been running the ball well all drive. Again, I'm not criticizing the play call that they end up going with, but it's not like that's the only thing they could have done. And it's not like that was the only way to pick up a yard. And it's not like they needed to burn a timeout to design that. They had options at their disposal. Plenty of options. And second off, and I'll elaborate on this a bit more later, if you line up in a formation after the timeout, the Texans can just call a timeout and match what you do. And now, you're completely screwed, because you can't call two timeouts in a row. If your goal was to see what the Texans were going to do, you forgot to take into account that it works in reverse, and that the Texans could see what you were going to do, and just regain the upper hand in that mind game. And there are certain situations where you could say that a play is way too important, where it is absolutely beneficial to take the time out, because you've got to use them anyways, so why not use them in situations where it matters? And if the Colts had one timeout left, or two timeouts, I completely agree. Heck, if there were 35 seconds left on the clock, I would agree. Even if you do get the ball back, you've got no time left to do anything. That would make sense to call the timeout. But usually, this is a situation where a timeout doesn't outright cost your team the game. This is a situation where you're going to lose the game if you don't get the conversion, so you should take the timeout and talk things over. It is not a situation like this, where you just destroyed any chances of winning the game if you can't get a stop. It is a situation where taking the timeout doesn't impact the margin of error that your team has to win the game, or has a shot at winning the game. It is not a situation where your odds of winning completely plummet down the drain if you fail to pick it up. So it's like comparing apples and oranges there. It's not even remotely close to the same thing. And after the game, obviously, Shane Steichen was asked about the decision to take the timeout. And he said that it boiled down to wanting to see what look the Texans were lining up with, and wanting to have the right call for that situation. Which, okay, I understand it, and I figure that was the reason. But that doesn't change two things. Number one, if that truly was your intent, why not go no huddle? Why not hurry up to the line to see what look the Texans are in? And then, you can take the timeout and talk things over. I'm not crazy about taking the timeout, obviously. But at the very least, if you hurry to the line and you call the timeout with 25 on the play clock or something like that, you at least give yourself some room for error and you can accomplish the same result. But number two, and perhaps most importantly for the sake of this, like I said earlier, you do realize the Texans could have called a timeout there, right? It's not as though the Texans call a timeout and were frozen out. It's not as though there's a rule that says that once one team calls a timeout, the other team is forbidden from calling timeout on the same play. 
Suppose you wanted to see the look that the Texans were lining up in. So you call the timeout. Then, you wind up in that play, and you like it. But the Texans decide to call a timeout to reset so they can match your look. Now, you're completely screwed. You accomplish nothing, all at the expense of burning a critical timeout. So, even though I get what Steichen is saying here, I don't at the same time. Because the Texans could have easily countered if they wanted to. Just a horrible timeout at a horrible time, no matter how you want to slice it. And look, nothing about the game between these teams behind me right here or what happened in that game takes away from the incredible job that head coach Shane Steichen has done with the Colts this season. He's coached his butt off with this team to get them in this point. And if the Colts won this game, he probably would have finished the year second in the voting for coach of the year, only behind Kevin Stefanski of the Cleveland Browns. I don't know how good the Colts are going to be next year, simply because Gardner Minshew is going on to greener pastures, and Anthony Richardson, you might have some rookie pains technically, because this would really be his first season. I don't know how good he's going to be, but the Colts are in good hands from a coaching perspective. I know that much, which is why I feel for him. I really feel for Shane here, because of all the times to make your first mistake, your first costly mistake, oh man, you picked the worst possible time. I really feel for you, man. I really do. So what do we learn from all of this? If you have two options, and one option gives you a margin for error, and the other option gives you no margin for error, and both options would produce the same result if successful, then take the option that gives you the margin for error. Timeouts are your last lifeline and a last resort to get the ball back. So don't just go wasting them for no real reason, especially when your season is on the line. If you have two options, and one option gives you a chance to get the ball back and win the game if it fails, and the other option does not do that, especially when your season is on the line, then you should probably pick the first option and get the ball back. If your strategy is to call a timeout to see what the other team is lining up in, without failing to realize that the other team can just pull an Uno reverse card on you, then your strategy might not seem to make a whole lot of sense. And if you decide to call a play where your entire season rests on the success of that play working, even when you do not have to have it be that way, and don't have to do it that way, then you might want to think things over. And man, does Shane Steichen have the next few months to mull that over. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.